As a fundamental program, only the basics were required in creating a sufficient user interface. The ability to ask questions, the ability to receive answers, and the ability to display cases that bear the most resemblance to the case currently being investigated. It would have been a very large task had not the NTSB database already made numerical designations for occurrences, flight phases, subjects, and their modifiers. Also, all the important decisions regarding the relative positions of all the cases and all possible questions were determined by the inference engine, so the user interface only had to interact with the inference engine in terms of inputting answers and displaying results. The perceived needs of the user and program developer caused the display of multiple similar cases as opposed to showing only the most similar case. A program developer needs to see how the displayed result evolves or is calculated to ensure that the appropriate functions are occurring. Constant checking of the top 20 results heavily assisted in making sure formulae and calculations were performing accurately. From the user's perspective, there was an obvious requirement that in one lone case record could hardly be expected to meet the user's information needs. The details shown in the 20 most similar cases effectively tell us who was flying what, where, when, and where to. These details include the case's event ID, date, aircraft make, operator's name, departure location, and destination location. The only other detail shown is the level of relevancy, which indicates the proportionate number of questions, and therefore answers, that positively match the case shown against the total number of questions asked. The capability of the program is dependent on its ability to use causes and factors determined in previous investigations to predict future investigations. So essentially, a likely sequence of events for the user's investigation is created from A, the user's answers, and B, the probabilities those answers imply. Given partial sequence of event data, or question answers, the engine calculates a score for each historical case indicating the number of exact matches between its events and the events contained within the partial data. Positive matches increase the case's score, negative matches decrease it. Cases are then ranked according to this score and the events from cases above a certain rank are collected and their frequency in that collection determined. The next question that is asked of the user asks whether or not the event with the highest frequency had occurred. From here, further questions are asked regarding the other highly frequent possibilities. Questioning ceases when a significant amount of variation occurs between the levels of relevancy between the cases displayed. The use of the GP1020 program requires Microsoft Office Excel 2003 or better. To use, simply follow the instructions indicated below or as indicated on the introduction page of the program. Click on the spreadsheet titled Query Page to begin the process. For the sake of speed and ease of testing, the historical and statistical data used here represents only one year's worth of NTSB investigation records, 1982. On the sheet titled Query Page, two distinct sections will appear. The one at the top shows the top 20 most similar cases and thus be used as a reference in understanding the case that the user is currently investigating. The one at the bottom shows the questions that the software would ask depending on the data given. To begin using the software, answer the two questions already shown in the bottom box by clicking on the yellow box next to each question and choosing an appropriate answer from the drop-down menu. Soon after, a third question should appear. Similarly, choose an answer to the question that just appeared by clicking on the yellow cell next to the question and choosing an answer from the drop-down menu. Consequently, the top 20 most similar cases will be displayed on the top box and a fourth question should appear in the bottom box. Continue answering questions till the relevancy column, the one in green, begins to show different values. From here, two choices become available. Either start to use the top 20 cases to gain understanding on your case, or answer more questions to increase the relevancy or to cause further differences in relevancy. Ideally, with an increasing amount of variation in relevancy, the 20 cases shown should become more suited to assisting understanding of your case. Should you wish to begin a new case, simply delete all of your answers. 
GP1020 computer tool and its features resemble the well-known automated fingerprint identification system, AFIS. Therefore, GP1020 is often called by the author the AFIS of aircraft accident investigation. In addition, a brief review of AFIS systems is given in order to provide an insight into these systems and the features they have in common with the GP1020 tool. AFIS systems are primarily used by law enforcement agencies for criminal identification initiatives, mainly for identifying a person suspected of committing a crime or linking a suspect to other unsolved crimes. The greatest use of AFIS systems lies in the area of latent print identifications. As systems, AFIS technology has automated an already existing process for identifying individuals. The analysis of fingerprints for matching purposes generally requires the comparison of several features of the print pattern. These include patterns which are aggregate characteristics of ridges and minutiae points which are unique features found within the patterns. However, identifiable fingerprint attributes originate from minutiae points. On the other hand, automated fingerprint identification is the process of automatically matching one or many unknown fingerprints against a database of known and unknown or latent prints. In this regard, AFIS systems are capable of extracting the minutia point of recorded and digitized fingerprints and translating the images into identifiable equations that could be understood by any other fingerprint examiner. Pattern-based and minutia-based algorithms compare the latent print in question with those stored in the AFIS database within minutes, completing the work of hundreds or even thousands of latent examiners. After all latents have been entered, the latent examiner checks the work and launches the case. The latent fingerprint is searched by the matches against the latent cognizant database within AFIS containing hundreds of thousands or even millions of images. After that, candidates for a match associated with some numerical measure of the probability of a match are made available and are retrieved for verification. For instance, AFIS utilizing the SAGEM Morpho operating system usually provides a list of 30 candidates for a match. The photo in the figure shows a match between two fingerprints within AFIS identification, whereas the table presents a match within a GP1020 inquiry. The yellow circles show the matches in evidence E2, E3, E4, E5, etc. during the GP1020 exercise, indicating the accident associated with cause 3, C3, from the GP1020 database will most likely assist in facilitating the investigation of the current accident. It must be addressed that AFIS systems are only a tool used by the latent examiner. Namely, the examiner determines if the latent image is of value, then selects the search criteria and examines the lists of candidates produced by the search. At the end, the latent examiner makes the identification. However, not every latent print search will result in identification. Actual figures show that only 2-3% to of latent print searches will result in identification. Despite the low rate of identification, AFIS systems are irreplaceable tools in a police investigation worldwide. Similarly, GP1020, as described before, is a tool that assists in aircraft accident investigations. Namely, the GP1020 program is designed to facilitate the conventional investigation of an air safety event and enhance the investigation outcomes by retrieving a list of the top 20 most similar cases.